My Lords, uh, and thank you uh, for, you've, to the, your Lordship's House. Um, I rise to offer support for all of these amendments, but particularly that Clause 24 not stand parted, which is the obvious way forward here. And I want to pick up on the points made by the noble lady, Baroness Neville Rolfe, um, who I think was not entirely consistent in suggesting that we shouldn't worry about the way the bill is structured because there's a very strong uh, person as the first head of the OEP, as Dane Glenna Stacey, uh, and then said, oh, but we, what we've got to do is we don't want it too independent because then it might get too strong and dynamic and, and take too much control. Um, and I think that really highlights the issue that many people are saying, isn't it great the person we have as the first chair of the OEP? But the fact is that this should not be dependent, structures should not be dependent on individuals because individuals change, individuals are in different places. Um, roles change over time. And as we're often talking about in terms of what's on the face of the bill, the, um, uh, the government tells us, oh, trust us, we don't have any ill intentions. But the point is not who the current minister is or what the government's in at this moment's intentions are. You know, we are setting up here something very new, very important, something that's likely to be continuing for decades. And I think what we're talking about here is you know, the environmental uh, review process. Um, and the OEP being able to state what the remedies for that are. Um, there's been a lot of talk about carrots and sticks and soft and hard powers. These are really things that are really quite subtle um, and that need to be used with great independence, great ha to have real force over long periods of time. Now, I think we've had a lot of discussion about um, comparisons with other uh, government bodies, such as the National Audit Office, the Electoral Commission and the Office for Budget Responsibility all of which have stronger levels of independence, um, a real independence from ministers, from departmental structures. And I think it's quite telling, really, that two of those are financial-type structures. So we're talking about spending money. We've got to you know, have some real independent oversight of that. But when we're talking about the environment, somehow it's good enough to just leave it with the government and leave it with the ministers. And I think that that really is a, a question, an issue, of um, what we regard as important, what we really value, what we really guard. And that's very much what we're looking for. And I think, um, I think it, it may have been um, Noble Lord, Lord Krebs, uh, who quoted the, Minister, the Secretary of State as saying, oh, if, this, if we don't have these controls, there's a risk of making it up and it goes along. Well, actually, surely that is the point, that the OEP is creating new structures, needs to create those structures, not be directed by the minister in those structures. And the noble Lord, Lord Curry, speaking just before the break, um, said a very important point. Um, what's the point of having guidance if there is no impact? So we're being told, oh, well, the minister can just provide some advice, some offering. But if that's not going to have an impact, then why does it need to be there in the bill and why does it need to be given? So we think about spending government money very carefully and with really independent oversight. I would say that when we're looking after our environment, our natural world, tackling the climate emergency, we need that same kind of independent oversight. 